So hi everyone, thanks for pressing yeah, play. Okay. It's Morgan here with an amazing guest and I guess you saw it in the title. I have Linda Jorizo. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> hi everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here and I know you're super busy and you just came back from Peru for our show. So thank you so much for your time and the time Aww, that you're sharing thank with you. <laughs> so you just released a new album, Forever, which I'm the proud owner, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> uh, so extended version, 80 minutes of amazing music, real, the real deal, the real 80s music. <laughs> and you also released the vinyl with your greatest hits, like 300 hand signed copies. So. Yep. <laughs> and you have a lot going on. That's so amazing. So everything is with Zix Music. And at the end of the month, so the 30th, if I'm not mistaken, you also have the acoustic version of Passion. And uh, yeah, so you will be telling us everything about it in our, I mean, in this episode. And I will put all the links in the description as well. So if anyone wants to check okay. you out, like send you love and buy your CD or your vinyl or all the links are there. So thank you so much once again. And uh, yeah, so you joined the well-known group, The Flirts, back in 1983, right? Formed by Bobby Orlando. On stage in 83. On stage in 83, right. And I worked, you... I worked in the background. I worked in the studio before. Um, and then I, I went on the stage as of 83. Okay. So, yeah, that was, that was my introduction. <laughs> awesome. So how did this amazing story start and like with the flirts and also more generally in the in the music industry my story with the flirts is really crazy i i worked as a model uh back in the 70s in milano and portugal mm. so i did music as a hobby and when i went back to the states to study i kept in contact with my old producers and songwriters from milano so every time they came to new york for business they would always call me and we'd meet for dinner and one evening i was invited to dinner in an italian restaurant of course <laughs> mm. and at the table is bobby orlando and my old producer from milano he asked bobby he said do you know linda joe rizzo he said no he said she's she's a great singer you should you know cast her once so bobby said come to the studio the next day he was doing some recording for them and i had an appointment and and i went to the studio casted and the day after, I was with the flirts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was just I never like expected. That. Never expected. Wow. So that's um, like crazy uh, story. Calling. Yeah. That's destiny. You know, that was your, yeah. your destiny to, to be in this, uh, at this spot in that very moment. So that's so wonderful. And uh, the chemistry, the vibe was so aligned for you to, to start. So I, ha I have to say also that shortly before, or maybe it was the same time, um, I was very active in as a, as a hobby in New York in the Italian American scene, and I think it was eighty two or eighty three something. Um, New York did a Piccolo Sanremo uh, for Italian Americans, and I won first prize. Wow! Um, with an original song, and it was. At that moment, like all of a sudden, at that moment, with the lights and the applause and all, that's where I got this feeling in my in my stomach, like this. They say, you know, your gut feeling. That's where I wanted to be on stage. Wow. It just boom, from one minute to the next. I don't know. <laughs> Amazing, like a revelation. And yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so amazing. So you said you were on stage with an original song. So you had written it yourself and. No, this was written by the band that I represented for this competition. Oh. Everybody had to present their own song. Um, but it was lovely. I mean, it was for me, it was I did it just for fun. And all of a sudden, I, I won first prize. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> 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 Couldn't believe yeah, it. <laughs> so it's like uh, the stars were aligned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so beautiful. So you stayed in the flirts and then you transitioned from being in a group to being a solo artist. So how was it? What did you have to face when you transitioned? 
Um, okay, the, the flirts was, of course, my first really professional experience. Um, it was a good experience, but I'm I'm a very spontaneous person on stage. I like to do my thing. I like to improvise. I like to move how I want to move. And when you are in a girl group or boy group, of course, there's specific choreography, movements, singing, and the other two girls in the group, they were really, I guess, just having fun. They they didn't have any um, goals to really be professional singers or anything. So we were on two different levels. My expectations were a lot bigger. And how I left the flirts was also you know, a chance thing with the stars lining up, as you say. We were on tour with the Flirts in 84 in Saarbrücken, not far from France. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was a big festival of 80 stars. So it was us and Fancy and Modern Talking and CC Catch and Sandra, Bad Boys Blue. Everybody who was anybody was at this concert. And I was on stage. When I got off the stage, Fancy gave me his telephone number mm. and said, if you ever leave the group, call me. Yeah. So, I mean, it was on a piece of paper. I stuck it in my jacket or suitcase and we were on tour for five months. So I lost the number. Oh, no. So at the end of the tour, which was December 84, I went back to New York and, you know, uh, broke my contract with Bobby Orlando, um, came back to Germany. And of course, I couldn't find the telephone number. Mm-hmm. So I really, from being a star, I went all the way down to the bottom and started in a piano bar. I was just Linda Jo Rizzo. I wasn't the flirts anymore. Mm-hmm. And I was singing live, which we didn't do on stage. Mm-hmm. So I, I took this job. I mean, I had to survive. I was with my little daughter and I was determined. I wanted to make it here. I didn't care what I had to do. I mean, not everything, but (laughs) no plan B, just yeah, exactly. Everything straight. (laughs) But one evening, um, a gentleman sends a glass of champagne to the stage. So in my break, I went over to the table and I, I said, thank you very much. And, you know, salute. And then he said to me, are you Linda Jo Rizzo? I said, yes. He said, why didn't you ever call me? No way. And I said, who are you? (laughs) Fancy. Okay. When I met him at the concert, of course, if you remember back in the 80s, he was always with makeup and glitter and sparkles and, you know, and this evening he was in a white shirt and pants. He was a man, I just a normal man. Oh. I said, I didn't recognize him. So I said, oh, <laughs> I said, I lost your number. And then he asked me when I was finished. I said, one o'clock. So he said, do you have time afterwards? I said, Yeah. <laughs> Morgan, I'm telling you, this was destiny. His oh studio God. was 100 meters or 200 meters away from this piano bar. Wow. So at one o'clock in the night, we went into the studio and recorded my first single, which was Fly Me High. No. So it, it was destiny. That is so that amazing. That was the start of my the, career the in Germany. The probability that he was there or maybe he was tracking, I mean, quote unquote, tracking you because he was really. He was I don't know. Anywhere. I don't know. But of all the piano bars and all the streets of Munich, he found me. That is so amazing. Yeah, Definitely yeah. Destiny, like you cannot escape your, totally. <laughs> your destiny. Wow. So that was my start. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Because... Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, my, my, I get the goosebumps sometimes. Anytime I tell the story because it's really so, so different. So yeah, fancy. Yeah, really unique. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It's... Uh divine <laughs> yeah so well you you touched a little bit about that earlier when you said that you were on stage and you realized that it was your thing to yeah. to be on stage mm-hmm. but before that did you did you ever think did when did you realize that you were not meant for a nine to five job basically and oh. uh, that you had a voice and uh, um so that I didn't want a nine to five job or normal life. I knew that when I was very young, I wanted to be different. I wanted to be in the lights. I remember as a very young child, maybe five, six, seven, 
I was fascinated with the old black and white Hollywood movies, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, Gene Kelly, all of these um, films with dancing and singing, which was the way Hollywood was in the early years. And I didn't know I wanted to sing. I just wanted to be on stage. I wanted to be in the lights. Um, singing, I never thought about singing, but I think I developed a voice because I, I sang in the church when I was a kid. I was in a Catholic school oh. ugh, for eight years, and every Sunday I was in the choir. So um, people always said I had a nice voice, but I never, ever thought of being a singer. Never. Okay. Wow. That's so amazing how how it just revealed itself to you, like your something yeah. within you was stronger and uh, yeah. was this inner knowing that you were meant for for something big. So And I wanted to travel. I loved to travel. I wanted to learn different languages. I wanted, you know, when whenever I had children, I wanted my children to be international, mm -hmm. to school in Europe and to learn languages. And I, I managed that also. I I wanted to get away from that all American I mean even though my family is Italian you know America is always America they're they're not very um open to speaking different languages and different cultures New York yes you know as um, as a New York New Yorker mm -hmm. we grew up in a different culture than the rest of the United States um but yeah I wanted I wanted that broad horizon I wanted to see the world. So I knew if you had a normal job and a normal life, that would not be very possible. Mm -hmm. You know? Definitely. So it all it all came together. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, a big, uh, perfect combination. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Big mix of all that. So what did it mean to you and what does it mean to you to, to have become singer, songwriter, and producer as a woman? in this industry? Uh, well, Fancy, whose real name is Tess, um, he gave me the opportunity to write. Uh, you're my first, you're my last, which was my second single. Love he it. asked me, would you like to write lyrics? Because, you know, in the 80s, all of these people doing disco music, they were not American. They were all Italian or from Northern Europe or German, etc. And the texts, of course, were like, oh my God, <laughs> what are you writing here? <laughs> Someone whose language is English like mine, uh, I would look at the words and I'm like, oh my God, what are they trying to say? <laughs> so um, he gave me my opportunity and I guess he loved the text that I wrote and I just kept going. And now I've done over the 40 years, most of my texts. And I also write for other artists, you know. But amazing. I gradually, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not a producer in the sense of I'm not a musician. I have a great ear. I can I can think of a melody and I can guide a musician, but I need somebody who can play. I uh, I learned piano as a child, but unfortunately never continued because I didn't know I was going to be a singer. If I knew, <laughs> I would have kept up with my lessons. It would have been fabulous mm -hmm. as a woman to play and sing. So, yeah, I, I sort of work with producers. I work also with songwriters because when I need to write a song, I need the idea and I need I need the melody. And I also ask the, the composer, what did you feel? What were you thinking when you wrote, when you did this music, when you created this music? I like his feeling. And then I build my text on that, my lyrics. Wow. Because I like to work with them. You know, it's it's not like music and words. Mm -hmm. it, it's together. An experience, like a sensory experience. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really, I always ask them, send me a melody line and tell me what you were thinking. Give me an idea what you felt. What does this song mean to you? And that's how I write. Wow, that's amazing. So really involving the the emotion and yeah. writing from the heart, really. Totally, totally. It's, it's, um, it's teamwork for me, you know? Mm. It's not a separate thing. That's beautiful. Yeah. So what is your, it might be a tricky question, among all the songs that you have written, whether it is for yourself or for others, if you had to pick one favorite, 
or let's say two, one of yours and one of others, what would they be? Okay, one of others, I can say the new title of my album, Forever. I love this song. It's just so boom, you know. Um, nice. What I wrote... You're my first and my last will always be a favorite because it's the first song that mm. I wrote the words to. Mm. Um, but a song I co-wrote that I love because it's very positive is Day of the Light. Day of the Light, unfortunately, that whole album did not do very well because we tried to do it too modern or the producer who's in Paris, Johan Perrier. Oh. We didn't know, Johan didn't know that the 80s fans are so totally into this pure sound of the 80s. So Johan tried to do it a little bit more modern, and the fans didn't like it. It's crazy. Wow. But I love that song because it's it's like forever. It's very positive. Mm -hmm. You hear it, and you want to move, and you sing along, even if you've never heard it before. Yeah. Those are songs I like that go right into your ears, right into your head, you know? Mm -hmm. But you're my first, you're my last. I mean, when you think about it, it's a little bit sad, but it's happy at the same time because it's like you're my first, but you're my last. But yeah, it's a, it's a it's a happy song, and you you just want to to sing and dance, and uh, so that's the that's the magic of uh, like emotional <laughs> transmutation. <laughs> It's so interesting. I wrote that song, and then years later, I really had the biggest love of my life, which was a tragedy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that song was really, yeah, you're my first, you're my last, because I think when, when you've really, when you've found this big love and it doesn't work out, I think... You can never find, you never feel that way a second time in life. I think that really intense love happens once. Mm. You can love again, but it's not the same as that big, big one. Mm. So I really had, you're my first, you're my last. Oh, bless. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, you know, I don't mind. Uh, well, what matters is to, you know, keep, Keep on keeping on, as we said, and yeah. like have the strength and the courage to open our heart again and love again. Yeah, yeah. it's it's not easy, and mm -hmm. and also I think you know in in our business, I think it's harder for a woman artist than a man artist. When when the man is the artist, you know, the woman's she's got the kids and the whole household and the shopping. She like she gives the support in the background that he can go off and on stage mm. as a woman you need a man to stand behind you and you still are a mother you're a wife you're, you're you know at home i'm like every other woman when i'm on stage that's that's a separate life and I never, I never really had that total backing from a man. So I don't know what it's like to have that support. And that's why, like, I'm alone. You know, I basically brought up my kids alone and I'm fine. You know, at, at this point in my life and at this age, I feel it's got to be a wow. Otherwise, I'd rather be alone. I'm, I'm not, I'm not at an age anymore to compromise. I've done it too often. It's like, no, this is me. Take it or leave it. You know. Yeah, that's totally understandable because at some point you have like the, the if you pardon my French, the bullshitometer that goes in the red, and you're like, okay, no, no, I'm like exactly, you know, exactly. You work yourself. You work on yourself. You you make yourself stable, and you find this peace. So it's either someone adds on to your life exactly. or not. But it's like you cannot compromise your... No, life. not anymore. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay. Like, you know, people ask me, aren't you lonely? Or do you ever feel alone? No. I have, I mean, I have three children. So there's love there. Mm -hmm. And also with my music and my shows and my fans, there's so much interaction. There's so much love there's so much giving that I, I I never feel alone. That's a gift to be able to to be yeah. alone and uh, enjoying our own company. Of course, 
we love other people i say we because i can relate to what you say at, at a different scale because you know <laughs> i don't have the same job as you <laughs> <laughs> but like being alone and um actually some people really suffered during the pandemic of of this loneliness and lack yeah. of interaction but you know it's uh it's really about being okay with being with intimate with yourself and when i say intimate it's really about being honest with yourself and facing your own yeah. what we call shadow right yeah and uh and not lying to yourself and uh yeah so that was actually one of my questions like did people have expectations from you as a female artist because you had like you were saying you had to balance the personal life uh the successful career traveling and going on stage and mother wife uh or partner and uh and and a woman and also being in a different country also you said you love traveling and all that but <laughs> learning the language and yeah uh, so how how did you really experience that um i was very fortunate um germany is has a very good system for artists um medical insurance pension these are all things i would have never had in the states or maybe in other countries they have, they're very well structured they're very correct everything's with contracts everything's paid so the the structure of the business was very secure for me um as a single parent my children had places in kindergarten right away and and after school um uh, care etc i earned well enough that i was able to afford an au pair i had a girl living with us there was that's the only way i could have gone on stage and traveled and i was really fortunate i had great people and i was gone on the weekends but during the week i was home with the kids so i i always tell people i ran my home like a business i was very structured i'm very organized which is not typical of artists i'm very disciplined <laughs> maybe that's you know from being alone i don't know but whether it was breakfast and homework and school and bath at night and reading before bed and going i had a system and it worked and my kids today they're all very independent they're very organized they're very self-sufficient um that's the only way i could have survived and in the music business almost everybody speaks some level of english so i was able to get by in the beginning and german was hard for me because i knew italian uh I could communicate lightly in Spanish, Portuguese. So my experience was Latin languages. I always wanted to learn French, but I never had the possibility. Oh. <laughs> so German was like, that was another universe for me. Um, so yeah, I, I had to learn. And the mentality, even today, I'm living in Munich now 38 years, which is a long time, <laughs> but I still have a problem with the mentality. The Germans are very, they're, of course, extremely disciplined and proper and straight. I mean, business is business, and that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But on a social level, outside of the music business, um, it's often the mentality is very conservative. They're not as spontaneous as we are, as, the, you know, Latins, so to say. Um, they don't have the temperament and the emotions that we have. So it's... It's a lot of getting used to. It. I'm still not used to it. You know, I still love when I'm outside of the country with a lot of crazy people, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you you make it work. I had a dream. I had a goal. Mm -hmm. And it's like you put blinders on like a horse on a racetrack and you just go forward and hope you're doing it right. <laughs> nice. you know? It's about, like I was saying earlier, like plan A, no plan B. It has to no. work. There was no plan B. Mm. There couldn't be. <laughs> yeah, and that's beautiful because you you had the ability to compromise, if I may say so. Maybe that's a strong word to actually make it work, yet still 
still enjoy what you do because even if yeah. it's not easy, you are still getting benefit from a like from a, a human perspective, the benefit of doing what you love and having this yeah. uh, like more freedom than in a nine to five, for example. Like yeah. 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 No, no, I feel good. I mean, I could not have imagined any other life. You know, you mentioned COVID before and it's interesting of course, COVID was for the for us artists a horrible, horrible two years. Mm. A little bit went on. I did two online concerts, but that's not the same. I need the energy of the audience, the lights and the applause, that adrenaline, that that um stage fright. I always have stage fright and that that mm. peps you with energy, you know. So um I was fortunate to work together with my record company, which I've been doing for five years. Um that of course financially gave me a, a um, how do you say a, a cushion, a pillow, yeah, a little bit of cushion, you know, for the two years. But on the other side, the two years of COVID was for me in my soul a very positive time. I really had time to reflect my life, what I've accomplished, and all because artists always think about what they don't have it's it's a normal thing you think about what you have not achieved what you still want what what still is out there and during covert i had time to look backwards and think about what i did accomplish and what i do have and i became very thankful and it's like okay if i'm not meant to be you know, as Linda Jo Rizzo, not with the flirts anymore, if I'm not meant to be Madonna or some big star, it's okay. I had great success. I still have success. I brought up my kids with music. I traveled the world. I did all of these things that many others have not. So Linda, be thankful. And whatever is to come will come. And if not, you had a good life. And you have a good life. And that's something I learned in COVID. Wow. Really, that was like, wow. <laughs> mm, yeah. Thank you very much for sharing how you, <clears throat> sorry, you turned a situation that was, well, how long is that going to last for? Like, yeah, what, we what's know. next? And you, you turn it into, into something positive by reflecting and by going yeah. within and to really learn, uh, learn lessons and focus on, on what you have accomplished and yeah and it's easy to to say oh, i i have this goal but i haven't reached yet but yeah but look back look back on what exactly you have. exactly so this is uh this is also very important and uh and yeah. you know what's so interesting i find this so crazy that I know of many people that are employed they have nine to five jobs and during the COVID time they had they call it quitsabite here, which is a shortened amount of hours. They were paid. They were still insured. They were home. They did home office. They had security. Mm -hmm. And so many of them now, they suffer depressions. They're aggressive. They have all of these problems in, going on in their mind. PTSD. All of my artist friends who didn't work for almost two years, none of them are depressed. Mm -hmm. They're all positive. They're, they, they, we're back on stage, full power. That says something about artists. Mm -hmm. It's like we have a positive thing. That's that's actually what I feel. That's what our job is or our purpose is on this earth. We are here to give happiness, to give something to other people. There's no time to be down or depressed or angry. There's no time. We have purpose. I always say artists are healers. Healers, yeah. Because, totally, totally. And that's why I, I really, I love working with artists. Because yeah, we are healers. One, one human being on stage impacts the whole crowd. Yeah. And of course, also with the CDs and like more than, uh, more than during the lives, also when yeah. you play the music. <laughs> in the house or in your car or whatever so that's that's so important to me to also support artists yeah because you are healers i mean how many 
how many people have you helped? Myself included. Because wow. there was a time when I was down and, you know, as a child, I was going through stuff. I was depressed. Music was keeping me up. Right. And even when I would have a horrible day at work, music, I would know that on my way back home, I would have a solo party because I, I have solo parties in my car. <laughs> but that was so important. So it's really big to like for any artist, whether they are working on becoming, you know, uh, like a full time artist or they want to like leave their nine to five or they already are like you guys are so important. Your role is so important yeah. in the world. 100%, whether it's music or writing, songwriting, playing an instrument, acting, writing books. Yeah. Whatever it is, it is offering a sensory experience to people. Yeah, you um, art, so to say, it takes you out of the reality and brings you into a different world. It's like a world of dreaming, a world of fantasy, a world of goals, a world of um, new horizons, so to say. And we need that so much today because look what's happening in the world. I mean, the, the whole world is going crazy. War and poverty and floods and tornadoes. And I mean, all of these things going on, mankind needs something to look up to, some yeah. positive light, yeah. you know? To build if that's if that's what we can give or provide, I'm happy for it, you know? Yeah, that's wonderful. Really beautiful. Yeah. So when you write, sing, and perform on stage, and I've never seen you live, but <laughs> I, I'm grateful for YouTube, but this this amazing energy that you share, you I mean, I can feel that you're really sharing from your heart. So what is the message that you have to pass on, like that you want to pass on and what sets your soul on fire that you want to transmit to your people? Oh, God. What message? Well, positive. I mean, the energy I have on stage is because I love what I do. I really love being on stage. And I love when I see the first smile on someone's face, it's like a flower blooming. Mm -hmm. I love to see people. I love to make people happy. I love to make people smile. I know that that hour that they're with me, they're in another world. They're happy. They forget their problems or angers or whatever they have. And if that's what I can give them, that makes me happy. I think the, the most important thing I want to give to people is positive. Be positive. Don't waste time on, excuse me if I use a word, but bullshit. You know, there's there's so much. Look at the beautiful things in life. Look at what you have. Look at what you've done. And if there's something in your life that's not working, that doesn't make you happy and doesn't make you smile, get rid of it. And I mean anything, if it's work or a husband or whatever, we often, we're, af we're afraid often to make a change. We become comfortable even if we're not comfortable. We convince ourselves, oh, well, you know, there's this and this and this and this. It's you. It's all about you. Do your thing. Be who you are. Of course, you don't want to take away from someone else or hurt somebody else, but you are important. You are number one. And when you're okay, then everything around you is okay. Mm -hmm. If you're not okay, it's going to reflect on your job, on your relationship, on your children. It's going to reflect on everything. So you need, I always say, healthy egotism. Mm -hmm. You need you have to be okay. And when you're okay, it just it goes out. You don't even have to plan it. Right. Give a smile when you go to the bakery to pick up your croissants. Say bonjour. <laughs> Pretty good talk. You know, it doesn't cost anything but a second. And that woman behind the counter who maybe wasn't smiling, she's gonna smile. Yeah. And then she's it, gonna do the same for someone else naturally. Absolutely. It's a chain reaction. Yeah. So 
Definitely. Yeah, I mean, I can talk like this now because I'm older. I've, you know, done, had my experiences, etc. But absolutely, I think that's the most important thing is first work on yourself. Mm-hmm. Be able to be alone. And then you can be with other people. Yeah. And then just just spread it out. Just put it out there. And it works. It's beautiful. And it all comes back. Yeah, so that's what I call like planting seeds. Where yeah. does it go? You just plant seeds. And uh, we, we talk a lot about this negative vortex. But the positive vortex also works. Because like you said, it's it's a chain reaction. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's also important to, we all have moments when we are a little bit down or things are wrong. We have, so that, that's why in society there is this quote unquote, what I call toxic positivity. Like, yeah. oh, it's yeah. okay, you have to be, you know, unicorn, rainbows, everything is perfect. But this is also toxic. Yeah. Because if if we don't address these things that are worrying us or yes. both, or the fears then we poison ourselves from within yeah. so what if i may ask what is your pick me up or if you want to share with people how you you get yourself back into your happy place or your okay place you know how do you gather with yourself <clears throat> when when i'm down about something or something's bothering me which i have to honestly say is not often it's not often. Um, I more or less, I don't socialize then. I stay home alone mm-hmm. and I work it. I think I'll watch maybe a good movie. I'll read. Um, but I take time to to think, to analyze. I'll feel down. Maybe I'll even cry, you know, mm-hmm. but I seem to pick myself up fast and I think, okay, Linda, you got the feeling out, you got the emotion, you got the sadness out. There's nothing you can really do to change it. It is what it is because mostly if something is bringing me down, it's it's a person or a thing outside of me. So I can't change that person. I can't change that thing. I can only change how I feel. So... Yeah, I take that moment to feel sad and then I just pick myself up and I go again. Exactly. This is ex- You can't do anything else. Yeah. And uh taking time to process and that's also I believe what happens when you you do the work on yourself. Like of yeah. course you're still going to be shaken a little bit here and there because sometimes you just hear horrible things or someone you care about is going through a hard time and of course it affects you of course of course but when you really take time to clear your your own things and be there for yourself you pick yourself up quicker and and it's not a race that's not what i'm saying but you process more easily it's like your pipe is clear so you just let let the thing go through the pipe and then you're like okay so you yeah You find the strength within yourself. I also feel often um, we make situations worse ourselves. You have a problem. And when you constantly thinking about that problem, you actually build it. It becomes bigger and it becomes stronger. Stop. Stop thinking about it. Have a look at it. Realize that, okay, it's there. There's really nothing you can physically or mentally do to change that problem because it's outside of you so look at it analyze it feel it and then put it on the shelf Mm. and go on and think nice thoughts and beautiful thoughts and positive thoughts and you can always take a look at that problem i'm not saying like you mentioned you know not to just everything's all flowers no but don't beat yourself on the head because that problem it's not in you you can't remove it you can't change it Mm. take it for what it is and go on keep it there have a look think about it but don't let it rule your day exactly you know 
Beautiful words. Thank you <laughs> for sharing. I love this interview with you. Like we're really getting into all this deep conversation. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. I also enjoy it a lot. It's great. <laughs> so would you like to share what has changed between life before 2020 and life after 2020? I, I know you said a few things about artists being happy to go back on stage, but the the way the world is or the, the, the feeling that you have from the world, how you perceive it? Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't find the world better after COVID. I had hoped that with this these two years that mankind, so to say, would go through some revelations like I did, you know, like appreciate and go back to the simple things in life, realizing that you don't need a lot to be happy, et cetera, et cetera. I find, unfortunately, that after COVID, or at least this is what I experience here living in Munich, I find people more impatient, um, more intolerant. It's like everybody's rushing. They rush to the red light at the corner. It's like, where are you going? They rush in the supermarket. They, it's like there's something changed not for the better. And it saddens me because it's like, didn't you guys learn anything in these two years? No. Um, and then look at the war in the Ukraine. And then, I mean, okay, these these natural catastrophes that are happening, tornadoes and floods and things, we have no power over that. But still there's... There's climate change. There's all these things I find mankind takes so for granted everything that they have. They just take, 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 and take and not give back. And it's like, when are they going to learn? I, I personally, and I don't want to sound negative, but I personal th personally think that mankind, he's going to, he's going to kill the earth off. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, They're too, I don't know what the word is. Um, they're too self-expectant. It's like everything is there for them, whether it's the light or the electricity or the water or the heat. It's like it's there because they are, they're entitled to it. It's their right. Mm. And they don't give back. It Everything is giving and taking. And just taking and not giving doesn't work. So, uh, I'm not happy with um, the way the world is today. And again, I think that's the plus for the artists is we have to work harder and give so much more of this good feeling that we give because yeah. we put a smile on people's faces. We make them feel good. And if that's what we can contribute to the world, then we have to do it. Right. And actually with your forever album your new album you're really bringing the let's call them the sound of the old earth i mean the before 2020 earth let's say yeah and like you delivered this amazing cd with lyrics which is always good for people like myself who are just passionate about you know really getting into the core yeah. Song. It's a whole experience. It's not just I'm just listening to music just to have a background noise. It's it's a whole experience from the soul. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what inspired this album? The producer of my old album, Fly Me High, he produced this one. So Marek Kuludinski in New York. He's originally from Poland, but he lives in Staten Island since forever. <laughs> um, he is a Passionate, fanatical 80s fan, so Italo Disco fan. Um, he also has a label, Space Sound Records, and they do the synth, um, 80s synth, Italo Disco synth. So he can hear 15 seconds of a song and he knows that's right or not. Wow. And it was in the COVID time that, you know, we're constantly in, in contact. And he said, Linda, let's do another album. I was, okay. <laughs> So we actually started in COVID. Wow. Um, thank God for today. The, this is one of the positive things of internet. We were able to, I was able to work with all of these composers around the world. They did the music. 
they sent me the um, MP3 with a little melody line. And most of the songs I either co-wrote or wrote on my own, a few not. But Marek was the one who gathered all of these people. I mean, he, he grabbed top names in the Italo disco and new generation genre. People that I, some of them I knew and some I, I never even heard of, but they were amazing. And, and this album is, everybody said, this is the best I've done and one of the best on the market for this genre. So uh, he really did a fantastic job. So like, wow. <laughs> you, you said the forever, you love forever, I love forever. But is that your favorite song of the album or? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I also love the cybernetic lover. Yeah. That's coming out in vinyl, by the way. Oh, is it? Uh, I love fashion and cybernetic lover. They're coming out through Holland on vinyl. And uh, After Midnight is coming out on vinyl mm -hmm. also through Poland. It's also good. Oh, I, I love them all. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so beautiful. we can recognize the, the signature and sounds of fancy, the, the influence. and uh, like Fancy Bobby O. Yeah. Also, and yeah. Was it challenging to to stay in the original sounds of the '80s yet to create something new? Yeah. Yeah, he brought in some of those old synthesizer sounds, the old drum beat. Um, I mean, this is my music. I don't even understand all of those things because I'm not a musician. I'm not a technician. But Marek knew. He knows exactly. No, we need more of this, less of that. Pop, 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 and. It's amazing, amazing. It's, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> so you can feel that this CD was made with so much love and care and uh, totally, totally really big intention behind. That's really what I felt. So, And I did the vocals outside of uh, Let Me Go, which I recorded in California. I did the vocals in Munich. And the head of the studio is also my keyboarder. For when I do, you know, I also do things outside of Italo Disco with live music. Um, and Francesco is, I mean, we know each other 30 years. He is so much fun to work with. He's a brilliant tone engineer, um, a sound engineer, but also a brilliant keyboarder and piano player. So he was able to find the harmonies and change some keys and things. And we laugh so much in the studio. I mean, this is important also for a singer is that you have somebody on the board who doesn't just sit there and, and you know, record your voice, but that, that you interact and feel good with. And with Francesco is like, we had so much fun recording this album. Wow. That's a very important factor. Very important. Amazing. So even to, to the people that you've been working with, it feels like everything has been so aligned. All the yeah. Way. Yeah. You know, that is really they were special. all lovely. Really. We communicated mostly on emails or WhatsApp, but it was, it was like a big family and people I never even heard of or met before but it was just this whole big family working together it was the harmony was so perfect so perfect wow that and that's really Maddox. Good. i have to thank Maddox for that oh, amazing yeah well, thank you because you know for putting everything together and that's really really an experience i really really recommend anyone to if they haven't listened yet to go and listen and get the cd because It's also <laughs> to to support artists. Yeah. So what advice would you give to artists who are dreaming of starting a career in the music industry nowadays or working on going full-time artists? Um, okay, first of all, to go into our world full-time today, I would not recommend it. <laughs> Take your time, uh, keep your job, or your studies, or whatever you're doing, start off uh, hobby-wise and work your way up. Because in my day, so 80s and 90s, we had clubs. We had TV shows, musical TV shows. So we had an abundance of opportunity to earn, to live from music. That's not there today. There's, there's no discotheques anymore. I mean, you have one instead of a hundred. Mm -hmm. um, So it would be foolish 
to throw yourself in. You've got, you have to eat, you have to pay your rent. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm very realistic. You need discipline. And I think starting at the bottom and working your way up, you have an appreciation and a respect for the business and you will never go hungry. A lot of these, you know, like superstar shows and voice and all they they present music or stardom as like wow a lot of kids today they think if they can sing under the shower they're going to become a star no <laughs> there's a lot of beautiful voices out there it's not just the voice you need the discipline you need to rehearse you need to practice keep your feet on the ground don't let your you know, mind float up to the stars. This is work. This is a business. This isn't a fantasy. And if you want to make it work, you have to work. Nothing's for free. Yeah, it's, anything is possible. It's just about being sensible as well. And surround yourself with good people, whether this managers or producers or secular. If you're young, make sure your mom or your dad is on your side or somebody, somebody to guide you. You know, um, a lot of young people, when they start having success, you know, they start throwing money around and the success, you don't know how it's going to, how long it's going to laugh and then last. And then they find themselves with debt or whatever. So, Treat it like a business. Treat it like something real. And keep your feet on the ground. That's all I can say. Stay on the ground. Do all that you have to do, but keep keep true to yourself. That's a very, very important to always yep. stay uh, authentic and uh, integrity, you know, like not selling your, <laughs> your no. soul. No, no, no. So... And would you have any more particular advice to single parents in charge of a family more specifically? Okay, well, I said it before. Um, a single parent, you need, again, you need structure and discipline um, at home. I said it before that I ran my family like a business. Mm -hmm. Children need structure. When when they're just all over the place and everything is allowed and there's no time structure or anything, the kids don't learn discipline. They don't learn, they don't learn to structure their lives and they'll need that in their adult years. So teach them and also share with them and say, you know, mom needs to work or dad. I mean, there's more single mothers than single fathers. <laughs> just say, mom needs to work. I love you dearly. And you need to, you know, you, you got to help mommy because if I don't work, we don't eat. So <laughs> this is teamwork, like bring them in. And I brought my kids also to shows when possible. They traveled with me, but it wasn't always possible. So make them a part of your lives, but make them also understand they can't do everything with you. And I'm counting on you when you're home. You have to take care of the house. You have to take care of everything for mom. You know, and it was great because they would always, when, when I'd go off to a show alone, they'd always say, you know, sing nice, mommy. See you tomorrow. <laughs> and it was great. They never cried. They were never afraid. I never had a problem because I made them a part of everything. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. It was great. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> So how can people show you love, like social media, your website, where to buy your CD, stream? Tell us everything. How can they show love? <laughs> well, of course, they write, fans write me all the time. And, and I, I really say, I have to say, I don't have a secretary who answers. I don't have an agent who answers. I do. Yeah. Um, I can't answer everybody because it's hundreds. Mm -hmm. But when I can, I do. Um, that's the love I can give back. Them writing me is the love they give me. Listening to my CD, purchasing my CD, following me on Spotify, on Facebook, on Instagram. I'm more active on Facebook. That's more my generation. The kids are on Instagram. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah, it's an interchange. I'm I'm happy when when they just write, I love your song, or they post something. And I post it again, you know. 
it makes them feel, it makes me feel good because they wrote me and it makes them feel good because I acknowledged mm. what they did. So it's a circle. Mm. It all flows together. Oh. I do the best I can. Like I said, I, I can't, I can't answer everybody. I can't do everything for everybody, but I try my best. Yeah, you were one, uh, what'd you say, one person army? <laughs> I'm a one person. Oh, God. really? And there's <laughs> only a certain amount of hours in the day. <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. I will put all the links in the description so people can follow you if they are, are not already. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are. And would you have any last words to say to, to share with everyone listening? Well, I wanted to say one more thing about the passion that's coming out. Yes. Um, how we arrived at that acoustic version. Mm -hmm. um, Zix, my record company, they had a Christmas party in December. And, of course, everybody said, Linda, you have to sing something. I'm the only singer in the company. So, <laughs> Linda, you have to sing something. So, the studio man, Vadim, he brought his guitar and he put on a wig. It was so funny. And he stood up and started playing passion in the wrong key so i said wait a minute i need a different key and then i came in and i sang it just with the guitar and everybody screamed and then the owner of the company was mikulski she said you have to record that her daughter too you have to record that <laughs> so that's how it was born again it was just chance and then vadim uh did a guitar um version and uh, played like a very light flute in some in in the middle instrumental part which reminds me of stairway to heaven from led zeppelin so um we recorded it so this is actually there has never been an 80s song like in this genre of disco and disco that was done in an acoustic way this is the first time so mm -hmm. i'm very excited or interested to see how the the fans are going to react well, it's never been done before a, a little snippet the other day a few days ago you started to post a little preview and i'm like i want more <laughs> i want to listen. yeah yeah the little pre well because i can't put it out till the 30th course, when it's course, released but i'm know. like i'm really looking forward to yeah i'm very curious to see but as far as the last tip I mean, we said we said so much, and and I just, I mean, I I can just say, just in general, you know, just keep going, just keep positive, and do your best, and pass on a smile. And music is, as you said before, music is medicine. Music is, we 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 saw that in in the COVID time when we had two years of no music. It was like. Oh my God, the world needs music. Music is culture. Music is life. It's happiness. And um, if that's what we're here for, then I'm happy to be a part of this medicine. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I, I will always say it. Artists are healers, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I have to remember that because that's a beautiful phrase. Artists are healers. Beautiful. I love it. Because it, it takes a special energy uh energy field and energy capacity to be in front of so many people at once yeah so you have to be built for it uh, that's what i personally believe yeah yeah <laughs> totally yeah not everybody can that's why i i mean we're gifted i'm, I'm happy that that i have this and and i couldn't imagine doing anything else even even through the hard times that i lived it's i i just like i said i put on the blinders like a horse and i had to make it also because of my children i didn't have plan b i had to make it because my children had to eat right. yeah so i was i was i had an angel looking down at me <laughs> yeah, definitely and, you know uh, and then fancy in the like angel in human form <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i had a couple of angels in my life <laughs> so yeah that's it but i really i this is an amazing interview i thank you so much because i've done loads of interviews but it's always just basically about music and we talked really about life today too and it's so important because it's nice to know also what artists think about how they see life and what they do and what their life is like 
outside of the stage, I think that's important for fans. Years ago, fans just wanted the glitter. I mean, they still do to a certain extent. They see you as something, wow, you know. But we're people like everybody else. And it's nice to know that we have to work hard too. And we have to change our children's diapers. And we have to go shopping. And you know, we have to do all those things too. There's no magic, you know. And yeah. to balance to balance the artistic life and the normal life, um, it's talent and it's work. And also like for the single mothers, that's something I wanted my children to grow up normal. Mm. I experienced um, a lot of, you know, really successful people, wealthy, their kids, they, they lacked direction and, you know, the, whether it was drugs or alcohol or getting in trouble at school or it's, there was a lot lacking and I didn't want that. My stardom, my my star is on stage. When I'm not on stage, I'm Linda. And that's what I wanted for my children. You know, they all had their part-time jobs. They all had their allowances. They all helped with the household. They they had as normal a life as I could give them. They didn't have a normal mother. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, yeah, I wasn't always there, but... I created as, as best a structure as I could, and it worked. It, it When I look back today, I don't know how I did it. I could never do it again today because, as I said before, artists don't have the financial possibility today that we did in the 80s and 90s. We don't have that amount of work because there aren't the clubs and discos anymore. I mean, I was on the road every weekend. I was singing, and now it's like, you know, there were TV shows full of music. They're all gone. It's life became too serious. Let's have some fun. <laughs> right. And it's paradoxical because on the one hand side, you have more access to music with the Internet, Spotify. Yeah. YouTube, yeah. All that. But on the other hand side, the, the real life events with the club, yes. like the, the yes. proximity has kind of uh, not really disappeared because it still exists, but reduced let's say reduced diminished it's true it's true um that's the positive and negative from internet internet made everything more possible also faster you can send a song to california in a split second right. but the digital world took a lot away from our physical the cds uh vinyls thank god they're back they're coming back and they're becoming always more popular but I still buy CDs. Kids only download. I don't even know how to download. <laughs> I don't know how to stream. I don't know how to. I don't want to know. I want something in my hand. I want to hold a product. I want to read the booklet and read about the yeah, artist. That, that was the joy. Like when you when you open the the CD and you see the little <laughs> booklet and all the names and you you really get yeah. to see the work involved, like all these names. Exactly, and, exactly. Because you you really feel the um, the work. The, yeah, and you feel connected. Yeah. With yeah. digital, I don't feel connected. You just you hear the song and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's there for three minutes and then it's gone. With a CD, you have it forever. With a vinyl. Forever. Wow. <laughs> forever. <laughs> Unintended. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Totally. Wow. Yeah. I'm so, so grateful for your time. Once again, I said it before, but I will say it again. I will put all your links in the description. Thank you. People can see all your links and follow you. And uh, really, thanks for showing the the human being behind the <laughs> big name. Because my pleasure it's really important to you know have this uh, it is it is important and for the also for the self-leadership you know my podcast is about self-leadership it's about leading yourself no matter what is going on in your life the the ability that we all have to pick ourselves back up and to yes. create something in our life and uh, you are the perfect you are i say you were because the episode is over <laughs> you are the perfect example of self-leadership so thank you so much you're welcome Shared. and thank you Great. for the thank you for reaching out and for this podcast is fantastic you you're you're great wow. you covered so much it's so beautiful 
Thank you so much. So thank you everyone for listening. Thank you once again, Linda. And uh, check out all the links in the description. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.